If you ask me who my prophet is, I will say, haven't you heard? His name is Muhammad, a mercy to the world, a mercy to the world. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wahda. والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأزواجه وذرياته الله سبحانه وتعالى has not created anyone or anything more virtuous besides our Beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made him the embodiment of excellences. Hazrat Maulana Qasim Nanudwi Rahimahullahu Ta'ala The founder of Darul Ulum Deuban Mentions in a couplet Jahaan ke saare kamalat ek tuj mein hai The excellences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cut it throughout the universe are all found in you alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted Adam alayhi salatu wa salam certain virtues, certain excellences Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted Musa alayhi salatu was salam certain virtues, certain excellences. Isa alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam. 
بیانبی علیہ مسلط وسلام دی صحابہ رضی اللہ عنہ مجمعین دی اولیاء All the scattered excellences, if you gather them together and make a bouquet out of these excellences, then you will see nobody but Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jahaan ke saare kamalat ek tujh mein hai. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam said once to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Lam ara rajulan afdala min muhammadin I have not seen any man more virtuous than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was simply the best unique so if he was the best in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or shall we say if he is the best he was the best he is the best he will remain the best if he is the best in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then surely he must be the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then surely he has to be the most beloved to those people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the most beloved to the believers, to those who believe in Allah, to those who believe in his oneness, to those who believe in the risalah and nubuwa of his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to those who believe <coughs> in the finality of prophethood, to those who believe in Qur'an being the ultimate book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To these believers, he is the most beloved. And unless he is the most beloved to the believers, the believers cannot become complete believers. La yu'minu ahadukum. None of you can be a complete believer. Hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi. Until I do not become more beloved to him than miwalidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in than his father his children and all people Umar radiyallahu anhu upon hearing this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that None amongst you can become a complete and perfect believer until I do not become more beloved to him than his father, which implies parents, than his parents, his children, and all people. Upon hearing this, Umar radiallahu anhu observed, Ya Rasulullah, صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت أحب إلي من كل شيء إلا نفسي 
you are definitely most beloved to me than anything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are more beloved to me than my father, my mother, my children, my wife, my relatives, my friends, gold, silver, wealth, my honor. You are more beloved to me than anything. Illa nafsi. Except my life. My life is more beloved to me than you. You are more beloved to me than my father, my mother, my children. But my life is more beloved to me than yourself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Umar, you are not a complete believer until I do not become more beloved to you than even your own life. Umar radiyallahu anhu pondered over this subject. When he heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say for the very first time that a person cannot become a perfect believer unless I am more beloved to him than his parents, than his children, than all people. Spur of the moment without thinking much without paying much attention to, to this issue, without scrutinizing properly his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that, oh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is my condition, alhamdulillah. That you are more, more beloved to me than anything. More beloved to me than my parents, more beloved to me than my children, more beloved to me than all people, but... I feel that my life is more beloved to me than you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, Omar. If that is your condition, then your iman is not complete. Your iman is not perfect. So Omar radiallahu anhu thought for a moment. He looked at the condition of his heart with full scrutiny. He made muhasaba of his heart. Because it is natural for everybody to think and believe that I don't love anybody more than my own life. That is why in the spur of the moment, Umar radiallahu anhu assuming the same said that I am myself, my life is more beloved to me than yourself. But now he Look carefully. He thought, he pondered. How he pondered only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. He may have made muhasaba in this way in order to come to the conclusion whether Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is more beloved to him or his own life is more beloved to him. He may have thought in this manner that if there was a crunch, what would I do? If there was a choice between the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and my life, what would I have done? So many of us here will also, without thinking much, will say, hold on, there is a problem, because I think I love my father more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or I think I love my mother more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because when I think of my mother, I feel like rushing to my mother and seeing the face of my mother, meeting her. I feel like Hugging her, I feel like 
crying out of separation of my mother. But I don't feel the same when I think about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person may say this. People do come and say this. So my iman is not complete. Because I find that I have love for other people more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I am away from home, I remember my wife very much. I think about her a lot. Her remembrance continuously bothers me. I don't find the same feeling for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when I am away from Medina Munawwara. So if this person was asked, that do you love your father more or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In honesty he would say that it is my shortcoming. I find that in my heart there is more love for my father than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he will say that that is a reality. That is a, a, a fact. It's a bitter fact but that is a fact. Then if you pose a second question. That if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive, and if you had to choose between your wife and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what would you have done? Now he will say, I would have chosen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would have forsaken my wife. This is a sign that he has more love for his Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam than his wife. <coughs> So similarly, Umar radiallahu anhu assuming that a person's life is always more beloved to him than anything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the spur of the moment he declared that fact. But when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, Umar, no, this is the requirement of deen. This is the requirement of complete iman that you have more love for me than even your life. So Umar radiallahu anhu thought to himself, <coughs> that I have accepted complete iman I have had the fortune of being in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so let me check my iman so he checked the condition of his heart and he may have thought during that muhasaba that what if there was a crunch if I had to choose between my life and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life what would I have done and he must have come, come to this conclusion that I would have chosen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life over my life. So after this little muhasaba, self-reckoning, pondering over the condition of his heart, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the reality is that I have more love for you than my own life. I love you more than my life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-ana ya Umar. Al-ana ya Umar. Now, O Umar. Now, O Umar. O Umar, now your iman is complete. Now your iman is complete. Muhammad ki muhabbat دین حق کی شرط اول ہے The love for Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم is the first condition for this true deen for this deen of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی اسی میں ہو اگر خامی تو سب کچھ نامکمل ہے if there is a shortcoming, fault, deficiency in the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then everything is incomplete. Everything is full of deficiency. Salat without love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zakah without love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Som without love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hajj without love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
for one's iman to be complete, perfect, one has to love his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam more than anything and more than anyone in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what is the definition of this extreme love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What is the definition? There are two parts. Part number one. One should love the person of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One should, should love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a person, as a being, more than anything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, one should give preference to his teachings over anything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person after scrutiny, after muhasaba, after self-reckoning, comes to this conclusion that yes, my heart feels, my mind accepts that I love nothing more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And thereafter, he scrutinizes his life and after scrutinizing his life and self-assessment, he comes to this conclusion that when it comes to halal, haram, farz, wajib, I always give preference to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam over everything else, over my nafs, over my friends, over the demands of the society. Then he will be able to claim that nothing is more dearer to me than my beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. If a person's heart is void of average love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he is not even a believer. If the heart is void of average love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not even a believer. A person cannot be a believer without love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is a prerequisite of iman. And in order to become a complete believer, a person has to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he needs to give preference to his teachings over everything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every Sahabi, radiyallahu anhu, was a kamil mu'min, complete mu'min, perfect believer. Therefore, in regards to his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we can all conclude that nothing was more beloved to a sahabi then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and a sahabi could not give preference to anything over the command of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much so that he was so beloved that a sahabi radiyallahu anhu gave preference to his mustahab teachings and Sunnah teachings preference over everything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was their love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sacrificing a fard or sacrificing a wajib 
فار کیرینگ آؤٹ اے حرام اور مکروہ تحریمی ایکٹ واز امپاسبل فار دیم ایون لیونگ اے سن آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم واز امپاسبل دیٹ واز دی دی ہائی ڈگری آف لو دی ہیڈ فار رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم because the more you love more love you have for somebody the more you obey if you have no love for me whatsoever you will not obey a single order of mine if you have average love for me then you will carry out the necessary items because of that every average love that you entertain in your hearts for me you will not want me to become unhappy so you will say this we have to do because it is compulsory if we don't do it he will become unhappy and because you have that average love you cannot tolerate me becoming unhappy but if the love increases more then your attention will be towards my wishes what what do i wish what do i want from you only hints will be enough only gestures will be enough and then a person reaches that status of love that degree of love for somebody that he would imitate the beloved in every single matter so much so that he will entertain this thought in his heart and mind that i wish i looked like him i wish my nose was like his my eyes were like his my ears were like his this is called mahabbat at tabi'i mahabbat at tabi'i the first is called mahabbat aqli intellectually intellectually you convince yourself that look he is an intelligent person and it's best for me to do whatever he tells me to do because that is where success lies whether i understand or not this is intellectual love and when the re- this love reaches a higher degree then mahabbat tabi'i natural love just as a person naturally inclines towards cakes towards chocolates towards sweets towards good food towards desirable items of all sorts the ears will incline towards those things which the ears enjoy the eyes will incline towards those things which the eyes enjoy similarly this person will always find himself thinking about his beloved he loves the way his beloved dresses he loves the way his beloved looks the whole world will find it very surprising as to why this person has fallen in love with this person but only he will be able to understand why he lives that, loves that person because he has reached that degree of love where he cannot see any fault in the beloved when majnu fell in love with laila the governor of that time said bring laila i want to see her beauty Kais has fallen in love with Layla and so many incidents of love have taken place that after listening to these stories and these episodes people have forgotten his real name and now they only call him Majnu madman mad about Layla so Layla must be very very pretty i want to see leila bring leila here 
when Leila was brought to the governor, she was not pretty at all. She was not beautiful at all. So he said, bring Majnu, Kais. He said, what is it that you like in this woman? She is not pretty at all. So Majnu said to the governor that in order to appreciate her beauty, you have to look with my eyes. You cannot see the beauty in Layla because you have not fallen in love with her. I am in love with her. So everything is beautiful as far as I am concerned. During the period of Jahiliyyah in Mecca, Mukarrama and throughout the Arabian Peninsula, it was the habit of the male gender to wear the lower garment of their clothing in such a way that it would go beyond the ankle. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam forbade this. He said, Ma asfala min al kaabayne fahuwa fin nar. He said, That area that is covered by the garment, by the lower garment, be it a trouser, be it a shalwar, be it a, an izar, be it a lungi, be it a jubba, that part of the body below the ankle which is covered with the lower garment or with a clothing for males, that part will burn in the fire of Jahannam. So it is necessary It is necessary to keep the lower garment or the jubba or anything that a person wears above the ankles and keep the ankles exposed. This is necessary. But the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was his habit was that whenever he wore a lungi, the lower part, lower garment on his body, then he would keep it in between the knees and the ankles. In the middle here. Even in this day and age, those people who cover their ankles with their trousers, when they see people exposing the ankles only, those people who remain within the necessity necessary borders, they find That type of wear funny as well. So imagine a Sahabi Radhi Allah one going into Makkah Mukarrama in that culture where there was not a single Muslim with his lungi, with his lower garment, according to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, right in the center. How funny it would have looked to the people in Makkah Mukarrama. During the period of Sulhul Hudaybiyyah, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam chose Hazrat Uthman Ghani radiyallahu anhu to negotiate with the kuffar of Makkah Mukarrama, mushrikeen of Makkah Mukarrama, this was the mode of dressing of Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu anhu. So the person who gave him refuge and who took him into Makkah Mukarrama, he said, can you lower your garment? He said, la wallahi. He said, no by Allah, hadihi. Azaratu Habibi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the mode of dressing of my beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even mustahab items they gave preference to. Huzaifa radiyallahu anhu when he picked up that morsel and one of his companions said this is out of culture in this part of the world. Don't pick the morsel up. He said, أَأَتْرُكُ سُنَّةَ حَبِيبِ لِهَاُولَاءِ الْحُمَقَى Shall I leave the sunnah of my Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for these fools? The 
This was regarding the mustahab acts. And what is our condition in regards to the faraid? And the king of the faraid? Salat. What is our behavior in regards to the king of the faraid? We are overcome with shame when we have to perform salat at the airport or in the aeroplane. A person will only be able to claim that he has the most love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To him, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most beloved if he is able to give preference to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over everything else. And he is able to give preference to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over everything else. During the recent events, we have seen rage amongst the Muslim Ummah. The Muslims, each and every Muslim understands this rage. Because as far as a Muslim is concerned, his motto is, do whatever you like with anyone, but be careful with Muhammad. The issue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is very, very sensitive. Muslims cannot tolerate anything against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam because they love him. They love him dearly. Now, our love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is not to the highest degree. We cannot claim that we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot claim. Because in our day-to-day life, we are not giving preference to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over everything else. Despite that, if this is how much hurt we find in our hearts when someone abuses Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, imagine the love, imagine the hurt Sahaba would have felt. Ridwanullahi ta'ala ali majumai. This love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is something very special. What I am trying to say is, that despite having imperfect love and incomplete love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we feel so much hurt. Then how much hurt would the sahaba ikram ridwanullahi ta'ala ali majma'een felt? Would have felt. So as far as the Muslims are concerned, they can understand this rage very easily. As far as those people are concerned, who are unable to understand this rage, this anger, the non-Muslims, that is also understandable. Because they have not experienced in their life love of this degree for anybody. So they cannot understand why it is so hurtful? The degree of love that a Muslim entertains for his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the non-Muslims may not have entertained the same degree of love for anybody in their lives. So they are unable to understand this rage. This rage, this anger is understandable. But rage and anger 
has a limit. Our Sharia has demanded that we control our rage. We control our anger. La taghdab. Control your anger. Control your rage. Whenever we find ourselves in a state of rage, in a state of anger, we need to control our anger and try to find the limits set by Sharia for that particular scenario. If a person swears at my father, it will create a rage in me, fire in me, anger in me, and I will want to do so many things. If I love my father so much, I will even want to kill him. But should I kill him? This is the question I need to ask. He is swearing at my father, but and I am angry, and I should feel angry. That is the right of my father, father's love in my heart. But if I want to take revenge, what is the limitation? What does the Sharia say to me? And if the Sharia says, you can't kill him, then I must stop. If the Sharia says, physically you can't harm him, I must stop. If the Sharia says, even verbally you cannot say anything to him, then I must have the courage to keep my tongue under control because that is the demand of Sharia and that is what will make my Allah and, his, my, and my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam happy. The seven points that I have mentioned for Muslims to do during these circumstances. Point number one, study the seerah of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as much as possible from authentic sources. Acquire books, borrow books, buy books and read this great life as much as possible. Try your utmost to understand this personality. Try to understand his exemplary conduct, his exalted characters and morals. Try to derive lessons from his life. The sabr and patience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted him. The humbleness and humility. The quality to forgive and forget. The kindness, the, his affectionate nature, his compassion, his benevolence. Dekh lak, dekh kar akhlaq ko aur aap, dekh kar altaaf ko aur aap ke akhlaq ko ghair bhi kehte hai tum ho rahmatun lil alami. Dekh kar akhlaq ko after observing your characters and, and, and morals of very high standard. Dekh kar akhlaq ko aur aap ke altaaf ko and after seeing your kindness, your favors, غیر بھی کہتے ہیں, even the non-Muslims are compelled to say, غیر بھی کہتے ہیں, تم ہو رحمت للعالمی, you are the mercy for all the worlds. Rage and anger will be felt by... Every Muslim, even a child, if he is told that somebody is abusing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even the child will feel angry, hurt, rage will be there, fire will burn inside. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is very close to our hearts. The Muslim last on the list of the Muslim last on the list of the lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are billions of Muslims throughout the world. The, the one last on the list 
who has the least love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even he will find rage and anger in his heart. But love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam demands that we control ourselves and we ask ourselves, where is the limit? Where is the limit before doing anything? During the events in the past, I remember reading an article of one BBC reporter. The last paragraph read something like this, that I understand the rage of the Muslims, but what I fail to understand is, why are they causing so much harm to themselves and their own fellow Muslim brothers and sisters? By destroying the shops, destroying the homes. The reporter said that I understand the rage that they are experiencing, but I fail to understand what they are, why they are causing so much harm to themselves and their own fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. That I fail to understand. So the rage is understandable, but crossing the limits set by the Sharia is not understandable. Love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam demands that whatever we do, we do remaining within the limits of our deen, of our sharia, of, of the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what we find in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also the Sahaba Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Hurmuzan was brought to the court of Umar radiallahu anhu, a very well known story. And Umar radiallahu anhu, after conversing with him, said, what is your last desire? Do you have any desire? Because he was sentenced to death. He was one of the commanders in chief. And he had caused a lot of loss to the Muslim army in the past. And he was captured. And he was sentenced to death. Umar radiallahu anhu said, what is your last wish? He said, a glass of water. Bring water for him. Hurmuzan was very, very clever. So some water was brought for him. Umar radiallahu anhu was in rage. He was in anger. He knew the harm and the loss. That was caused by this person who was standing in front of him. The executor is there with his sword in his hand. Water is brought to him. Kurmuzan begins to shake. He was a very brave man. He begins to shake. He takes the water up to his lips and then he removes it again. He takes it to his lips and he removes it again. So Umar radiallahu said, Hormuzan, what is the matter with you? He said, I am afraid, I am scared that you may order the executor to kill me whilst I am drinking water. So Umar radiallahu said that no, he will not execute you until you drink this water. So Hormuzan smiled. And he threw the bowl full of water away. And he said, Oh Amirul Mu'minin, you have granted me safety. You have granted amnesty to my life. Umar said, How? He said, You made this statement that I will not kill you until you drink this water. And that water is gone. That water is there no more. That was a promise made by you. Now think for a moment. The emotions within Umar radiallahu anhu, the anger, the rage, being deceived by Hurmuzan. But he followed the Sharia. I made a promise, I must follow that promise. He let go of Hurmuzan. This is what the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam demands. That we follow his teachings. Not our whims and desires. So number one, we must 
try to study the seerah of the Prophet And part of the seerah is, part of the seerah is, the seerah of the Sahaba, Rizwanullahi Ta'ala Ali Majmain, and also the pious people of the Ummah. Number two, after studying this seerah, try to verbally talk about this seerah as much as possible. Pick out the right portion at the right time. Talk according to the audience. Muslims, non-Muslims, young, old, intellectual, non-intellectual. So study this seerah as much as possible. Speak about this seerah as much as possible. Try to find good leaflets, good booklets on seerah. And distribute as much as possible amongst Muslims, amongst non-Muslims. And try to give place to this seerah in your lives. Practice this seerah. This fourth item is the most important. Give place to this seerah in your lives. Like Omar radiallahu anhu did. Number five, when you feel hurt, send salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as much as possible. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasallimu. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends salat, sends salat, salutations. The angels sends salat. O oh, you who believe, you also send salat. So there are three salats. What is the salat of Allah? Does Allah also read? Salat like we do, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad? No. What is the salat of the malaika? Do they also read salat like we do? No. The salat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathers together the malaika and he praises his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you can say that he holds a jalsa wherein the audience is the malaika and the speaker is Allah himself. Allah talks about the Nabi, he praises his Nabi. Maulana is hafid of the Quran. If the whole world says he is not a hafid, what difference does it make? That is a reality nobody can change. Maulana is an alim. If the whole world says, no, he is not an alim, he is a jahil. He is nothing but ignorant. It is a reality that he is an alim. Nobody can change that reality. By making a few cartoons and writing a few articles and making a film In an attempt to degrade the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you cannot change the reality. In Allah wa malaikatuhu, Allah praises. Istimrar, there is continuity in this sentence. Allah and His angels continually praise, continually invoke blessings, continually invoke salat upon Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises his Nabi. That is Salat of Allah. And what is the Salat of the Malaika? After listening to the praises of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Malaika say, Oh Allah, praise him more. Praise him more. Praise him. That is their Salat. And what is our Salat? Our Salat is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Oh Allah, continue praising the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of the malaika. And the malaika will continue to say, Oh Allah, more, more, more. This has been going on since 1400 years. More, 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 more. Warafana laka dhikra.
So if some people choose to attempt to degrade, never use this word that people are abusing the Prophet ﷺ. No, they are attempting to abuse the Prophet ﷺ. Never say they are disgracing. No, they are attempting to disgrace. Nobody can disgrace the Prophet ﷺ. Nobody can abuse the Prophet ﷺ. They attempt. If they attempt to degrade and, and disgrace the Prophet ﷺ, our responsibility is to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, O oh Allah praise him more in front of the malaika. This is our responsibility. This is one of the best ways of taking revenge. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا We have elevated your dhikr, your mention. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, nobody is mentioned more than his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody else is mentioned more than his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many people recite Durood on a daily basis? How many people go to Medina Munawwara and convey Salam in his court on a daily basis? How many people remember him throughout the day by following his Sunnats? Sunnats which will be seen by those who are not his fans, who are not his lovers. As something very, very insignificant. Oh, very insignificant. They, they pay so much attention to this. His hair was like this. His beard was like this. His cap was like this. His turban was like this. He used to eat with three fingers. He would sit like this. Yes, you will not be able to understand. This is Allah elevating the dhikr of his Nabi. All the time being remembered, 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 remembered. The Muazzin may say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. His azan cannot become complete without him saying, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. In Iqamah, the Muazzin will say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha Illallah, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha Illallah. His Iqamah will not become complete unless he says, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. The Musalli is performing the Salat. He says, Allahu Akbar. He praises Allah, Subhanaka Allahumma. He praises Allah in Surah Al-Fatiha. He says, Allahu Akbar. He says, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Ala. But his salat will not conclude until he says, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Until he says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. La ilaha illallah tawheed. But a person cannot emancipate himself from the darkness of kufra and shirk. And he cannot come into the light of Islam without the mention of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Qabr, the angel will not only mention Rabb, Mar Rabbuka. No, he will also say, what is your opinion regarding this person that you see? Each person will be made to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the grave. Warafana laka dhikrak. Warafana laka dhikrak. Allah has elevated him in this world and this elevation will remain until the day of Qiyamah. Allah elevated him before he came into this world. Allah elevated him when he was in this world. Allah elevated him after he left this world. Allah will elevate him on the day of Qiyamah also. There are only two names which are continually mentioned throughout the 24 hours in the whole world. Only two names. Allah and Muhammad. 
because Allah has made five times salat compulsory and he has set the five times salat in such a way that not a single moment passes throughout the world where a, anywhere in the corner of the world a muazzin is not saying ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah there is no azan here in leicester at the moment but somewhere in the world the muazzin must be saying ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah there is not a single moment when allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not being mentioned and not secretly from the minaret we don't have to worry about islam we don't have to worry about quran we don't have to worry about the honor and dignity of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam these are times of tests and trials we have to worry about ourselves am i fulfilling my responsibility or not during these times what am i supposed to do those people who do not experience any anger whatsoever any rage whatsoever any hurt whatsoever they also fail and there is another group which goes to the other side of the extreme so much rage so much anger that they go as far as killing innocent people they have also failed this is a test for all of us so number 5 salat ala nabi if we are reading 300 times salat ala nabi we need to increase it to 500 1000 times and talk about salat salat ala nabi virtues of salat ala nabi 5 number 6 turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to safeguard islam islam will remain safe quran will remain safe but if we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be rewarded for it the maqam of wasila and the maqam of mahmud has been allocated for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam nobody else will be able to reach the maqam of wasila and maqam of mahmud on the day of qiyamah the highest maqam on the day of qiyamah maqam e wasila maqam e mahmud it is fixed for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam despite that what did rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say after every azan make dua to allah that allah grants me maqam e wasila and maqam e mahmud allahumma rabb hadhihi ad-da'wati at-tamah wa as-salati al-qa'imah ati muhammadan al-wasila give muhammad the maqam of wasila wal fadila wa ba'athu maqaman mahmuda raise him to the maqam of mahmud that maqam is definite for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam despite that we have been instructed by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make this dua why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one who hears the azan and listens to it carefully and who repeats the kalimat of the muazzin thereafter he recites durood salat ala nabi and thereafter he reads this dua and asks allah subhanahu wa taala to grant me maqam e wasila and maqam e mahmud i will intercede for him on the day of qiyamah what is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying i will say to allah that oh allah he was instrumental in me acquiring maqam e wasila and maqam e mahmud because he used to make dua for me so today i am asking you to grant him jannah and save him from the fire of jahannam هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله الاسلام يعلو ولا يعلى اسلام will remain until the day of qiyamah اسلام will remain inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun quran will remain and if quran remains a hadith which is the commentary of the quran will also remain the aqwal of the sahaba which is the commentary of the quran will also remain the whole sharia will remain وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ The عزة, honor, dignity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will remain until the day of Qiyamah. Mm-hmm. 
But let us create an excuse for us to be forgiven on the day of Qiyamah. So make dua to Allah that, oh Allah, save the Qur'an. Oh Allah, save the Qur'an, save the Sharia. Oh Allah, save the honor and dignity of your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Save God. Oh Allah, save God, your deen, your Qur'an. Save God, the Muslim ummah, from all evils. Make dua. Talk to Allah. Ask Allah to grant correct understanding to those people who are void of correct understanding. There are so many non-Muslims out there who feel hurt because of incidents such as these. Every non-Muslim is not void of understanding. Every non-Muslim is not void of intellect. There are so many people in, in hundreds, in millions who feel hurt. They, they don't like these incidents. They feel hurt. Ask Allah to give correct understanding to all. Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Save Muslims from the evils of those who perpetrate evil. And save Muslims from crossing the limits and becoming extremists and doing things that is out of the boundary of Islam. And seventh point, exercise patience, sabr, sabr. And sabr is of three types. Sabr ala ta'a. Be firm on the commands of Allah. Sabr anil masiya. Be firm in staying away from disobedience to Allah during these moments. When emotions overtake you. When you become angry. Sabr ala ta'a. Remain firm on the faraid and the wajibat. What does Allah want me to do in these circumstances? Sabr anil masiya. I must remain firm and stay away from masiyat. From anything that will make Allah unhappy. And sabra ala musiba. Practice sabra on this pain that you are experiencing. And do whatever you want to do, remaining within the limits set by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If a person living in any part of the world takes his steps carefully, Remaining within the limits set out by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will not cross the limits set out by the law of the country. Seven points. Learn and study this great life. Number two, make mention of this, talk about this great life. Number three, distribute leaflets, booklets, appropriate. Every part of the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is appropriate. But the level of understanding will differ from person to person, from nation to nation. So, distribute those leaflets, those booklets, prepare leaflets and booklets. The ulama should look at the audience. We are trying to target and prepare leaflets according to the need. The ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which teach good morals, good characters, incidents from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which a non-Muslim will be able to, through which a non-Muslim will be able to understand the greatness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His kindness, his mercy, his humbleness, his feeling for the humanity. Prepare literature, publish literature, Distribute published literature amongst Muslims and Muslims alike. Number four, give place to this great seerah in your life. Practice this seerah. Try to become like him. Try to become like him. If we become like him, we will become the beloved of Allah. And once we are the beloved of Allah, once we become the beloved of Allah, we will become the beloved of everybody. Number five, in abundance, 
salat ala nabi number 6 turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for assistance ask him for safety and finally number 7 sabr sabr ala ta'at sabr anil ma'siyah carry out remain firm on all the ahkam of the sharia the do's remain firm in staying away from the don'ts and sabra ala al-musibah anxiety, grief, calamity from sabr and before taking any step ask yourself is it permissible? is this according to the wishes of my creator and the wishes of my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard each and every part of this beautiful life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and grant all Muslims and non-Muslims alike to understand it correctly and appreciate it. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الحمد لله رب العالمين وحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه يجمع ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وجل آخرتنا خيرا من الأولى اللهم أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا تنزع منا صالح ما عطيتنا اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وجل آخرتنا خيرا من الأولى اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان وجعلنا هدى مهتدين اللهم اهد الناس جميعا اللهم اهدنا وجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم اجعلنا من خدام دينك وعشاق حبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارزقنا حبك وحب رسولك صلى الله عليه وسلم وحب من ينفعنا حبه عندك وحب من يقربنا إلى حبك وحب رسولك اللهم إنا نسلك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعان منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله سبحان ربي رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر